gold yeah. gloves. We have 46 gold gloves. Uh, there's space on 10 for uh, Mookies that we have not received yet. Uh, these are replicas. The players get the original, and we get a replica, so we're still waiting on Mookies. Um, but what I think is unique about the gold glove that really stands out uh, to me is that each glove is unique to the position and to the player. Right? If it's a catcher's glove, or if it's a catcher, it's a catcher's glove. There's first baseman gloves. Wes Parker, uh, one six as a first baseman, he's got his glove up here. If it's left-handed or right-handed, you'll see that. And it's a Rawlings award, but if you happen to use a different brand of glove, they use a model that's similar. So they try to use a similar size, same kind of webbing. Some of them have the open basket weave. Um, you know, so, so it, it's very unique. And you know, the size is unique as well to the individual player. For example, Maury Wills was a shortstop. He used a really, really long glove. Uh, Cesar Suris was a shortstop also, and he used a really tiny one. So those kind of things stand out to me. It's kind of cool to take a look at all of the different ones and see all of your different players. Does anybody know who's won the most gold gloves in Major League Baseball history? Mm -hmm. Greg Maddox. Mm -hmm. Greg Maddox played for 23 seasons. He won 18 gold gloves, two of them with the Dodgers. Uh, but he always said that if he could do the little things like field his position and handle the bat, he'd help himself win a little bit more and, and be a more effective pitcher. So. Greg Maddox. Uh, behind you, on that wall, or on your right side, you'll see our MVP awards, starting with our most recent on the right with Cody and uh, Kershaw. Clayton looks like a kid in that picture. Uh, going back through Kirk Gibson after his uh, you know, famous year, 1988, to the Garv, Koufax, Maury Wills in our, in our LA years. Don Newcomb won an MVP award uh, in Brooklyn. And then Roy Campanella won three MVPs in Brooklyn. We'll talk a little bit about him later as well. In the middle, you'll see our championship awards. And I don't say trophies because they're not all trophies. Uh, until 1967, all they gave out was a bat. The team and every player got an engraved bat with all the players' names on it. As you look at them, some of the bats are in script with the player's autograph. If that's the case, that means that they were a Louisville Slugger client. They used a Louisville Slugger bat. Uh, other players who used a different kind of bat, their names are in the title set uh, on the bat. So they gave out those uh, in 1967. They had Super Bowl, first Super Bowl here in Los Angeles. And the NFL gave out that nice, shiny football. And I think Major League Baseball just thought we'd better step up our trophy game a little bit. They designed this trophy. Started in 1967, we won our first one of these in 1981. Uh, the two flags in front are the two teams that played in the World Series. The next two flags are the teams that they beat to get there. And then the other flags are, are random. Uh, we also won one of those in 1988 as well. So we have two trophies, seven titles overall. We will see the 2020 trophy when we get upstairs. So if you will, embed this trophy in your mind, uh, you'll notice the difference between the, the brand new Tiffany trophy and how much shinier and nicer it is when you get upstairs. Cy Young was the winningest pitcher in Major League Baseball history. He was also the losingest pitcher in Major League Baseball history. Right Back then, players pitched more often, uh, pitched more complete games, had more decisions. He won 511 games. He passed away, and they named the award after him. And Don Newcomb, as a Dodger, won the first uh, Cy Young Award. Back in that era, they gave out one Cy Young Award for all of Major League Baseball. Now they give a Cy Young Award in each league, a National League and an American League uh, Cy Young Award. Uh, Don Drysdale won one as the best pitcher in all of Major League Baseball. Sandy Koufax won three. Clayton's won two National League awards. In 1974, Mike Marshall was a relief pitcher. He's the first relief pitcher to win uh, an, a Cy Young Award. He appeared in 104 games that year uh, as a, a relief pitcher for the Dodgers. Eric Gagne also was a relief pitcher who won a Cy Young Award. Uh, and in 1981, Fernando won the Cy Young Award, and he's the only rookie to win the Cy Young Award. Uh, obviously, 
if you're going to be the best pitcher in baseball or in, in the National League and win a Cy Young Award, that means you're probably also the Rookie of the Year. Right? Fernando was the Cy Young Award winner and the Rookie of the Year in 1981. He also won a Silver Slugger Award as the best hitting pitcher uh, <clears throat> back in that time. We have 18 of these Rookies of the Year. Our farm system has always been great. Uh, at one point in time, we won five in a row. Our two most recent are Corey and Cody, who are back-to-back -back, uh, as well. It's now named the Jackie Robinson Award. He won the first one and four yeah, years later. The San Manuel Dugout Club, fine dining experience, four-course meal during the, during the game, along with your typical ballpark food and things of that nature if you want to get something like that. Uh, if you have access or ticket to the seats, the dugout club seats behind home plate, you have access to this. Uh, so if you're watching a game and you wonder how come LA people don't sell their seats and sit in those nice seats that are right behind home plate, well they do, they're just in here getting food. And if during the course of the game you notice, um, different seats will be empty, right? Some people will be there, right? So they'll be going in and out from here. Uh, all you can eat, all you can drink, non-alcoholic beverages, you gotta pay for the, for the liquor on your own. Right? Uh, free liquor is never good no matter who you're giving it out to, right? especially the ball game. The artwork and the paintings are all done by the same artists. They're great, going in reverse order uh, from, from our history. Uh, our Kirk, that Kirk Gibson home run in 1988, we mentioned the 88 title a couple of times. Uh, that's the scoreboard exactly as it was at, at that time. You can see the ball over the scoreboard. Uh, about half, a third of the way up, um, the, uh, the light standard at the time. And then this next one is Fernando in his famous wind up, looking to the sky. And what a great uh, sunset he's looking up into, right? I love that uh, painting. And that's very, that's very typical during uh, a, a lot of Dodger games. I know James's favorite uh, location to watch a game from is the reserve seats on the right field side because at sunset you have a great, uh, a great view. This next painting, if we follow through, when we came to Los Angeles, Dodger Stadium wasn't built right away when we played in the LA Coliseum. Football stadium, track and field, Olympics, kind of interesting as a baseball stadium. We'll show you a little bit about that later. Uh, this is Don Drysdale pitching uh, to Ted Klazuski. Does anybody remember him? How about those arms, right? <clears throat> he used to get his sleeves cut off, even when they weren't designed to be worn that way. A little intimidating. Don was a little intimidating as well, <laughs> right? Drysdale used to say that the, sec the most important pitch was the second one right under the chin, just to let you know that the first one wasn't a mistake, right? <clears throat> he would brush back somebody. If you were sitting up in center field at the top, you were almost 800 feet away from home plate at, Col at the Coliseum. So players or uh, fans used to bring transition transistor radios and uh, they would listen to the game as it's happening. before he had a chance to play here in Los Angeles. And the question was number 42, why is it a different color? Why do you think the number 42 is a different color? Retired Yeah, that's Jackie Robinson's jersey. and it's retired for every team. And nobody on any team will wear number 42 except on Jackie Robinson. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Afternoon. And the thing that jumps out to me all the time, besides the trophy, is Mookie's dirty jersey. As soon as I see that dirty jersey, I see him sliding into home and remember the joy that was on his face once he bounced up. So feel free to grab some 
uh, pictures and we'll meet you back out here. Stadium opened, these were the most expensive seats. They were five dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> Field seats were cheaper than that. But this has its own dedicated uh, concession stand and bar behind you. Restrooms are not very busy, easy entrance and easy access. So it's very popular uh, for people that were either from Hollywood or high level executives that would come to games. If you step all the way through so people can get through as they're Going about their business, so it'd be great. So these are all the retired jerseys that we talked about when we were outside. Um, they're not necessarily game-worn jerseys, although they are representative of the era in which they play. You can tell by the different color jerseys uh, that uh, the Drysdale and uh, Pee Wee Reese uniforms are. I can tell they're not game-worn jerseys, because Tommy's would probably be a little bit bigger. <laughs> As we go down this aisle, or that, down this hallway, uh, just take a look at some of the artwork of, of the programs and the scorecards and the scorebooks on the right side, the yearbooks. Uh, that will take you a little bit through our history, and then we'll meet at the other end of this, uh, this hallway and uh, talk a little bit more. All right? So let's head on down this hallway. Stay to your right, just like we're driving on the roads. That way people can get by on the left. forward to the first homestand of the year for the champion, regardless of whether it's the Dodgers, because I like to see how they're going to use the traditional gold on their jerseys. It's become a tradition that the champion is allowed to put a little bit of gold on their jerseys, regardless of their color, during their first homestand of the year. Uh, the Dodgers chose that nice metallic gold, kind of classic, just to outline the letters. Um, that's how you can tell the authentic ones from the fake ones that have, you know, like metallic letter that you see around that they bought, you know, off of some street corner. Um, what do you think the metallic uh, gold number seven stands for? Seven World Series. Seven World Series championships, yeah. And then we have patches, Don or Tommy and Don Sutton. And we know that their game-worn jerseys are a little bit dirty. Turner's got his uh, trademark pine tar on the back of his jersey that happens after his first swing on the on-deck circle every day. All right, let's keep on moving.
So not a bad place to cover a game, right? Pretty good view, pretty good seats. Not every stadium has uh, access to this kind of seating for their members of the media. Sometimes they put them you know, somewhere up in the boondocks up at the top. Uh, but this is a great view. Uh, down in front typically is where members of the print press uh, would be online um, reporters, TV reporters sit at the top so they can get in and out for those post-game interviews and such. Uh, but if I said that this level was the brains of the, uh, the stadium, then this place is the heart and soul of what we do, right? It makes everything come alive. From the people that cover the games, and it's, it's uh, very impartial up here. You don't hear any cheering from anybody. The visiting team and the home team are both up here. But it's also very cooperative. They'll, they'll help each other. And uh, Albert Pujols hits a home run. Somebody will announce that it's that's number 776 for Albert, or 676 uh, for Albert. Um, so uh, this area behind me is where everything is operated on the scoreboard, the ribbon ads, uh, the in-between inning entertainment, the walk-up music by our DJ. Dieter Rule, our organist, goes back and forth between the keyboard and the organ. Uh, Dieter's great. He's you know witty, uh, plays things that are very, very uh, appropriate for what's going on in the game. And sometimes he plays a little back and forth with uh, Oral Hershiser and Joe Davis, who were broadcasting from just on the other side of that wall where Vin used to be. Uh, and if they say something that prompts a tune in his head, he'll play it, and they'll, they'll have a little inside joke if you're listening.